All right, ladies and gentlemen, in today's Holy Grail system update, we're going to be talking about trade management or something that I like to call risk management because it's all really the same thing. Now, I did record this whole video when I was on an island on a beach, but I did not like the sound quality because the wind was coming over. But it turns out the very next day, this guy, LAL, made the comment saying, Hi, Austin. Great review. Very helpful. Can you point me in a trade can you point me to a trade management video if there is such a video on your channel? Thanks. Now I did respond to him and I said, unfortunately I do not have a video on that, but that's a great video idea for me to make in the near future. But I will answer that question here and now I am making that video answer. Now this is gonna be a question, very short and brief, but we're gonna go on and talk about it. This is very important. If you guys are still here, it's very important to listen because there is no holy grail. We're going to be going over the holy grail of, of trade management and risk management. But the real secret is there is no holy grail. All right, so this is what I have to say um, after. I said, it's really up to the trader and what their strengths and weaknesses are. And what their trading system is, but also their beliefs in the market and how we can craft our strategy into making a more profitable strategy and accept the risk. Everything in trading will come from a give and pull effect from all types of trades we take. And I'm about to go into an example with that. We'll see you guys very shortly and tell you guys this. And how we manage them. We need to make sure we do our best to consistently perform the strategy over and over again and adjust when needed. I hope this helps. Cheers. All right. So this goes back to my whole thing. There is no holy grail. You might listen to so many different YouTubers. You, see, you grab five YouTubers. I know you guys listen to f five other YouTubers at least because I did the same thing. Now listen, I want to keep this short and brief under 10 minutes. You go to Trader One. He's going to tell you, oh, you know, I like to move my stops at the break even after one to one. Um, or I, I like to move them after two to one after my take profit. So all these, if you line up all the five YouTubers, they're gonna, or when I say YouTubers, I mean the YouTuber traders, just like what I'm doing here with you guys. Each one's gonna have their own different trading style so that benefits them in their strengths and weaknesses. That's what I was referring to. They're gonna build, they're, they're, they're managing their stops. They're really managing their risk management. It's not trade management, it's risk management. They're, they're really just managing the risk side. So they move their stops up the break even, maybe they get out at one to one or two to one, maybe they adjust their stops, their targets, maybe midway through the trade because their trade goes invalid based on their uh, trading strategy. Because there's thousands of different trading strategies, guys. It's important, I can talk about supply and demand because that's what I trade. And so I can't really go on about other trading strategies, but everybody's gonna have their own different little twist. Maybe it breaks a rule in their trading system so they gotta address their stops, but maybe you like to see prices move two to one and you like to double your profit before you move your stops to break even. Now there's, and then I went on to say, there's gonna be a give and pull effect with that, all right? So we're gonna go into the charts and talk about this. This was a recent trade that I took literally yesterday. Here was a trade I was looking to get short in. Now as for myself, I know many traders that move their stops after one to one and some that move after two to one, after they have, maybe after their first uh, take profit is hit. Now what's important is that they like to do that for themselves and they accept the risk because everybody's gonna have a different mindset and a different beliefs in the market and they've gotta build it to their strengths and weaknesses. So for me, maybe my background, becoming from a, a sports background, I was on a lot of winning teams in the in when I was younger. Well, I'm still young, but I've been on really bad teams and I've been on very good teams. I would put most of my sports career, I was on a 70% win rate for most of my teams. I was on most of the time very good teams. So generically growing up, I was built on winning on a winning uh, sports team. So when I reflect, I like to reflect my trading into sports. So I want to have a more positive win loss ratio. So if I go into a 40%, 30% win rate, but maybe I have a three or four to one risk reward, I personally can't take that because after two or th after three or four losses in a row, I start thinking to myself, man, I've got to make some adjustments. I've got to change up my strategy. What the hell's going wrong? Do I have to minimize my risk? Maybe after three, this is completely something else, but maybe after two or three losses, you want to half your risk and wait, and wait till you get a better trade set up and take that and get your confidence up and get an easy win. All right. So there's so many ways to manage it. Maybe you want to 
Uh, after, th like I just said, three losses in a row, maybe you want to take an easy an easy win and just get a winner under your belt. And so you want to take profit at one to one, just get an easy trade, get your confidence back. There's nothing wrong with that. There's some people that do that in their trading. They call it a layup trade where you're just going up to the rim and, and getting that easy bucket instead of going for the three pointer every time. It's going to get their confidence up. All right. So when I come from a sports background of being on a winning team, I personally like to be a, uh, you know, 60, 70% winner on those trades. And I personally hate when prices move two to one and then price comes back up and stops me out like it did here. So I personally move my stops to break even after one to one after price has moved. So if I have just for example, say we're taking this trade right here, this short prices after prices have moved one to one, say we had our entry here, our stop was just above here. We'll call it like that. After price has moved, uh, I'm not sure how many pips that is. Let's quickly see. Screw it, we'll call it 10 pips. Say that is 10 pips. After price has moved 10 pips, I'm gonna move my stops up to break even. Maybe I have my take profit, my half my take profit at one to one. And then I let my other take profit go to like four or five to one. But I move my stops up to break even, so it stops me out. Boom, I make money, I'm okay. And I protect my risk. But maybe if there's a trader trader YouTube trader number five he likes to take profit at two to one now here with price never would have gotten two to one it only moved just over it moved like 1.5 to one that's where I got my first target hit and then price is reversed so maybe trade uh, YouTube trader number five likes to take profit at two to one now price has never made a two to one move so he never adjusted his stops so he got stopped out at the full amount but maybe he's okay with that because he understands maybe in the long term, it's gonna pay off for him and he can manage taking those drawdowns bigger than taking a one-to-one, -one, like how I was taking them. But sure, I'm gonna have left, less profit potential, but it's how I'm gonna manage my emotions and maybe how I manage my risk will help me make more money than how he would make more money. So it's all gonna be a give and pull effect about how you manage your risk and you, how you take profits and everything. I don't like to call it trade management. I like to call it risk management because you're really just managing your risk and you're, you're managing your emotions. That's really what it comes down to. All right, everyone. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can add to this. All right. So what I really just wanted to get talk to you guys about this because I see so many goddamn YouTube people saying, and it pisses me off because everybody comes to me and they say different things like, oh, I, like, I like to do this. I like to do this. You should do this. You need to do this. Do whatever the hell you want to do, guys. If you like to have a 55% win rate, 60%, well, maybe you want to adjust your strategy to so that you can have a higher win rate, but you're going to be losing out on more break evens. So I see a lot of times, so let me rephrase that. I see sometimes where price is here. It, uh, I got the pullback right here, like I did. It's in green. I got, I got uh, that short. And then sometimes I see where price comes back up, touches it, and then completely drops like that. And now I get stopped out on the break even, but the guy that did not move his stops to break even at two to one, he's still in that and he's laughing. That's where it's gonna be the drawdown. So this is a trade that he would have lost, but for me, I would have got stopped out at break even. Now he might be in a two trade losses in a row and he's getting he's kicking sand. And now maybe I'm at like one break, uh, one, one of my take profits has been hit and my other trade has been stopped out at break even. Now I'm doing okay, I'm up money, but maybe he's just been stopped out twice in a row. But maybe the next trade, it happens all the time, like I just talked about. Maybe this happens like that and it drops. He gets his full uh, take profit. He never adjusted his stops. I adjusted my stops and maybe price continued to drop. It happens and it's always going to be a give and pull effect. That's why I always say give and pull. You adjust one thing, it's going to be a, a pull on the other. You pull it on that side, it's going to be, a, you're going to be giving it on that side. All right. That's all I wanted to talk to you guys about. I think what I just explained to you, it really is the best way. And if anybody says you need to be doing this when the EMA is crossed or, or anything like that, it, you really need to adjust your strategy about how you personally trade. And people ask me, what about take profits? What about this? It's really up to you guys. There's so many different ways to trade. There's a thousands of ways to trade. We need to be a managing our risk management around how we manage our capital emotions if I want to say our risk capital we need to be managing our emotions that's really what we're doing we're managing risk we're managing our emotions all right I'm going to leave you guys with that 
Thank you very much for joining. Remember, there's lots of different ways to trade. Find it out yourself. Maybe after 50 trades, review. Go back and review. Maybe you see yourself in your trading strategy that it's not working. Maybe you want to adjust. I can't sit here and say you need to move it after two to one. Maybe how we just discussed before, you don't like doing that. Make it your own. Stay consistent with it. All right? <laughs> all right, guys. Cheers. I'll let you go with that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I really believe I nailed this fucker right on the head with you guys. Thank you very much for listening. Cheers, guys.